All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 2023 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for the town of Carmel. Uh, board members' names are in front of you on the dais. Uh, we have Mike Carnazza, Code Enforcement Officer, as well as Greg Fulchetti, our town councilor, um, in, with us this evening. Um, the way we operate is I will ask you to come up, swear you in, and um, you know, you'll present your case. Once we close the hearing on an, on an application, there is no further input from the public on any application. So um, bear that in mind. Will you all please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Our first case tonight is a holdover for um, Glenacom, a.k.a. Glencoma Lake, for a variation of Section 156-20, 156-62.02, and 156-62.05, seeking a variance for permission to locate a public utility wireless telecommunications facility at the site. The property is located at Walton Drive, Mohopac, New York, tax map 87.5-1-90. Um, there is no pub, this, the public hearing on this application is, cl is closed, so there's no input from anybody, from the client or the applicant or the public. Um, in the interest of clearing the room, as I believe there's a lot of people here for this case, we're going to adjudicate on this matter at this uh, juncture. And Rose has? And Rose has recused herself. Um, so that said, uh, I will look for a motion on this application. Motion to deny and for discussion purposes. And do I have a second? Second. All right. So. Sylvia, discussion? You know, people are coming in here and they're looking at this as an area variance traditionally, but this is a telecommunications request. So the, the criteria is slightly different. What needs to happen really are these four criteria. Has the applicant established itself as a public utility? That's apparent, yes, they have. The basis of the designation of public utility? Yes, I believe that's established whether there is an established gap in coverage, and is there a need for the coverage to be provided in each gap area. These are the areas now that we're gonna look at in, in uh, depth. In my motion to deny, I wanna make it clear how I interpreted the data, specifically looking at the PeerCon Solutions uh, exhibit that was ex um, submitted to this board. Looking first at Yorktown Heights 2 Alpha, the summary of the KPI data on Pier Column 19 showed 70% of the days at 700 megahertz. In fact, the performance graph provided for Yorktown uh, was only exhibit O and only at 700 megahertz, which showed that and never exceeded an 8% call drop rate. Regardless, exhibits A through D in PureCon mm. showed decent coverage at 700 and 850 megahertz, while the drive test, specifically exhibits E and H, show no improvements to the coverage. There is not enough data to support any argument for improvement of data in Yorktown Heights to alpha. Looking on to Lincolndale Gamma, the Lincoln-Dale Gamma sector, sector had a 700 megahertz, 700 megahertz drop rate of under 10% for a majority of the study, with the period of November 5th through November 11th showing drop rates going much higher with a peak of 48% on November 7th. Drops in the rest of the spectrum never went past 6% in the other areas of the spectrum. As stated in the report, you start at the higher bands and you drop to the lower bands as time goes on. But the reality is starting in the lower band, you have no other place to go. Starting in the higher bands and dropping to the lower bands, the call drops are thus less, and the data provides that. So we should not discount the lower counts at the higher bands as the system is working as designed. Finally, the access rate failure rate is only hitting 4% on two days of the study. What's even more interesting is Exhibit A shows on streets such as Ross Drive and Rogers Lane during the drive test, they had coverage, but during the uh, during the antenna test at 140, 120, and 100 feet, those streets actually lost coverage. And looking at Heritage Hills beta, Heritage Hills, so the same, Heritage Hills excuse me, shows the same trend in data. 700 megahertz consistently has a call drop rate between 5 and 15 percent, with the higher frequencies consistently between 2 and 3 percent, with 850 megahertz peaking at 8 percent in the worst case scenario. The access rate failures sit again between 2 and 4%, with the peak of 7% on November 5th, 6% on November 8th, and 9% on 11-13. Uh, Once again, the maps show conflicting data 
with green and yellow shaded existing 2100 megahertz service on Lovell Street, Flower Drive, and Elder Road as examples, but disappearing on the map in all of the antenna tests. The Mayapak Falls data submitted never provided us anything other than 700 megahertz. Again, the average drop rate fluctuated between 2 and 5 percent. The access rate fluctuated between 1 and 4 percent. And again, streets with coverage such as Hillside Terrace, Kiora Boulevard, Glenicom Road, and Creco Place did not show service during the 2100 megahertz antenna tests, which existed prior. When I asked the people impacted citing Peercom, I'm sorry, when I asked about the amount of people citing Peercom page 9, which shows the gap in the 2100 megahertz spectrum impacting 1,900 people, I asked for a specific customer number, noting that Verizon's market share is 33%. The applicant admitted the number provided is based on the census and not the true population. The applicant also noted that through the area as well, everyone who lives there is a potential customer. The question the applicant raises, are they being materially inhibited? The, the applicant stated they have a significant number of customers that live in the area, potential customers, and customers that live and travel through the area. And it would be in the best interest of the applicant to show that customer count. Because without that data, I cannot make a determination. First of all, the number of description, subscriptions, if they were low, would indeed show that the applicant was materially impacted by the gap in service. Second, if the number of, uh, of uh, subscribers in the area was somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of the households in the area, then the applicant would then have to show me customer service complaints regarding the service in the area. No such complaints were submitted to this board. Regardless, the, app, the impact re is shown in hypothetical, not real numbers. In my opinion, no material impact has been proven. When I asked about the 1 percent drop rate, the applicant responded that it is an industry standard. Industry standard is a desire but not protected by law. In Exodet Systems versus the Village of Flower Hill, the applicant in the case stated, like the applicant in this case, the goal is to improve services provided by Verizon Wireless. The count also using prior precedent, the court found that while imp improved capacity and speed are desirable goals in the age of smartphones, they are not protected under the Telecommunications Act. Finally, the applicant noted a lot of emergency services use Verizon services. <clears throat> The areas identified on the gaps in the maps on page 9 and 10 on the PeerCom report show the gaps exist in both Mayapak and the town of Somers. Mayapak is provided services by Carmel Police Department, Mayapak and Mayapak Falls Fire Department, the Putnam County Sheriff, and ambulance ambulance providers. Somers is provided emergency services by the Somers Police Department, New York State Police, the Somers Fire Department, and Westchester EMS. None of those entities provided testimony nor sworn affidavits to this body for the need for this tower. In fact, the applicant, applicant never provided proof that these emergency services even use Verizon Wireless. Based on that, I, I failed to see a need for this antenna because I believe the applicant failed to prove it to me, a single board member. So on that basis, I'm moving to deny. Okay, any uh, other input? Um, <clears throat> I want to thank Silvio for putting in words that I can't understand. <laughs> um, when I look at this and I look at um, the Pure Con reports and as Silvio went through it, um, the applicant must prove that there's a public necessity um, it's required for adequate service. I don't see that that's proven here. They must prove that there's gaps. I don't see that the service is inadequate with those gaps that they're showing. As Silvio said, the percentages are minimal. Um, there's no indication that the location here will actually remedy the situation. Um, and it requires substantial evidence, and I don't believe it's there. Okay. John, any input? Questions? Yeah, I just want to echo all the words from Silvio and Phil, and uh, that the driving uh, factor here is considering that uh, whether that proposed facility is necessary to provide a safe and adequate service, which it does not meet. All right, Julie, any comments or questions? No comments. Okay. Um, I'll do a roll call vote. Um, you're either for the motion to deny or against. Uh, you are? For the motion to deny. No. For the motion. Sylvia? For the motion. And Julie? For. And I'm for the motion, so it, it is denied as uh, stands. Okay. 
Um, if anyone is here for this application and you, you're ready to clear the room, please do so. We'll, we'll take Quietly, a pause. please. Yeah. Clear. Yeah, we have other cases that are uh, right behind. So. Thank you. Oh, I told my mom to stay home. <laughs> Good night. All right, application number two is uh, platinum propane for a variation of section 156-15, seeking a variance for, for permission to convert a one-family house into a propane facility. The property is located at 1035 Route 6, Mahopac, New York, and is tax map 65.10-2-11. So the code requires front yard setback of 40 feet. What's provided is 22 feet, and a variance being sought is 18 feet. Also, the, min the code requires a minimum square footage of 5,000 square feet. What exists is 1,938 square feet. So a variance is required of 3,062 square feet. Okay, good evening. Good evening, Steve. Jamie Spillane of Hogan, Rossi, and Liguori for the applicant. Okay, are you a lawyer? I am. Okay, so I don't need to swear you in. Um, did you give your address? I'm sorry. My address is 3 Star Ridge Road, Suite 200, Brewster, New York, 10509. Okay, bring, us, bring us through your application, please. Yes, of course. So at this time, this matter is pending before the planning board. We were refer referred to your board for variances. Uh, what we're looking to do is put a propane plant on the site, but the variants are specifically for an existing building that will be converted into an office building. No changes are proposed to the exterior of the building, uh, besides just general customary routine maintenance to clean it up. Uh, all the changes will be in the interior of the building to the building that we're requesting the variances for. Uh, and any other buildings that are proposed on site pursuant to the site plan do not require any variances before your board. Okay, how long has the house been there for? It's been there, I believe, since the 1930s. It's a pre-existing non-conforming structure. The wow. same footprint, everything's the same from that original Yes, Built yes, uh, and as I said, pre-existing non-conforming uh, residential structure, it is in a commercial zoning district. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there is screening, some screening proposed with the application. As I said, it's in front of an existing building, but uh, pursuant to the overall site plan, they're going to be putting additional trees in the front of the property. Okay, so you're just in front of us for an area of area, so remind the public of that if anyone's here to discuss this. Um, any questions from the board? John? The <coughs> proposed facility, it's um, gonna going to provide distribution into mobile trucks or is that a distribution into residential containers? What I have a, kind of system is that? I have the landscape architect here and our client is here as well, but they'll be able to give you a little more information on the facility itself. All right, let me swear you in. State your name and address for the record, please. I don't mind everyone speaking to the microphone too because it's being recorded for minutes. Adam Thyberg, uh, Insight Engineering Surveying, Landscape Architecture PC, 3 uh, Garrett Drive, uh, Carmel, New York. All right, raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thanks. Uh, so the to, to answer your question, the facility uh, will be uh, a place where the propane is stored. They're, they will have retail uh, residential uh, customers to whom they will deliver propane. So, the, right. so what kind of screening are we talking about that's going to look like trees on the plan, right? Yep, so we, we have uh, some shrub plantings and, and, uh, and some trees along the front. No, well, what species is more specific? Uh, here we're showing uh, viburnum in terms of shrubs, which is kind of a, a large shrub, and we're showing AC. AC serviceberry, it's a flowering tree. Yeah, serviceberries and, uh, and red buds. Yes. All right. So they're not they're not evergreen type. But they're they're not. I don't think the applicant would be opposed to including some evergreen trees as well. And what, okay. what's the, as far as the propane is concerned? That's liquid propane. What's the quantity, the maximum amount of quantity you would have on hand there? The the two tanks that are shown these are going to be these are going to be buried tanks. They're two thirty thousand gallon uh, tanks. They're underground. 
two 30,000 gallon tanks, yes. And they're, <clears throat> they're covered in like a concrete slab? What, what is, they're, they're underground in a they're, vault? They're, they're buried underground, okay. yes. They're, there's, I, I don't believe there's a, a slab that's uh, involved, but they're buried underground. Uh, there is a, a loading, unloading um, location here that's covered with a canopy. This is the, the location where the, the delivery trucks would, would come up. They would load the trucks up uh, as they make their way out to make their deliveries. Is there a fixed fire protection with that system mm -hmm. or a <clears throat> kind of uh, life safety do you have on, on there? Yeah, so the, the applicants provided a, a very thorough and, and detailed uh, fire safety uh, analysis that was provided to the planning board. Um, the, they're working with Hills Propane and their engineers. Uh, they're putting together a, a state-of-the-art uh, system that will meet all of the NFPA 58 um, requirements. I have no further questions. Any yes. How far are you from the church? The church has a preschool in it with young <clears throat> three and four year olds. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the church property is next door. Uh, the tanks have specifically been, been put in this location to keep them uh, the, the maximum distance away. They're outside of a, an established setback, and I don't recall off the top of my head what that is. Uh, to a, a school facility. They're outside of, of the regulated um, offset from, from that, or distance from that facility uh, to allow for the tanks to be in this location. So initially there was con some thought given to putting the tanks over here. Because of that regulation, they've been moved to here so that they're outside of that, that area. And that's regulated by the state, the federal government? That's regulated by uh, the uh, NFPA, I believe. NFPA 58. Okay. That's the National Fire Protection. I forgot what the A stands for. Um, no other questions. Further. Bill? So regarding the front yard setback, you're, the applicant would be willing to put evergreen trees or shrubs or something in, in, in the front so it would be less intrusive? Of course. All right. So if we make that as part of the variance, that's okay? Then make it a condition? Mm. Okay, I have nothing further. Thank you. Silvio? I have no questions. Uh, Julie. No questions. I right, have one you more. Have any other well, one more question. Sure. Um, so these setbacks are for the existing building? Yes. So right. it's not for any new construction. Everything no is new construction. Everything else. All the new construction meets the setback requirements. So the, again, both of these variances are, are for pre-existing non-conforming conditions. It's the house off to the side, not the new one they built, Rose. Correct. Okay. The one from 1930. Gotcha. Every, every I passed it. <laughs> um, all right. At this point, I'm going to open it up to the public for any comments or questions. Don't all come at once. <laughs> uh, do me a favor. Anybody who comes up, please, when you're done speaking, just write your name and address on that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And I'll remind you, please, to speak clearly and loudly into the microphone as it's being recorded for, mm -hmm. for minutes. Okay. And, sir, if you could do that, put your name on there. Yeah. yeah, please. Thank you. So do you need me to state my yes, name or not? Yes, state your name and address for the record. Okay, my name is Robin Webb Lopez, and I live at 24 Baldwin Lane in Mayapack. All right, raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so we'll help you God. I do. Thank you. Okay. So I'm one of the people who received your notice because we're within 500 feet of this property. And... Um, we do, of course, have some grave concerns about having two 30,000 gallons of propane in our backyards. Um, but I do understand that we're here just to discuss these two variances. The question that I have is, um, can this project go forward without these variances? Yes, I guess they could because you one. could knock down that building and, and put another building. office building in. You could knock the, the only problem is the, the white house. So you can knock that house down and put a little structure up. Yeah, and I, I, um, I appreciate that they've been considerate to move the tanks to a location so it's not in close proximity to a school, but that does put it in closer proximity to all of our backyards, which is um, very concerning. And um, I understand, again, that we're only here to discuss the variances, but of course we weren't, made, we weren't aware that this project is, existed until we got this letter. 
Hmm. So I don't know if there is any other recourse that we have, you know, with them being buried. You know, I know that these are very, you know, modern tanks. It's not like an old oil tank, but does, you know, do we run the risk of ground there, there's, contamination? There's new codes. There's more stringent codes in today's right. world that, that cover and protect folks like yourselves. But, um, but you know, more I don't to know the, the I speak more to that. But um, when, when is the planning board meeting on this? I was going to say, yeah. this is a planning board. Because that, that's ahead. where you can go and voice right. further concerns. Again, uh, your concerns. Again, this is really just for air analysis. Yeah. yeah, there will be a public hearing. I just wanted to say on okay. the site. Okay. Do yeah, we let, know? Let, let the public have their time. Oh, yeah. I apologize. No, no, you're fine. Well, okay. I was also telling you to grab Well, Marcus thank you for making voice. me aware of that meeting, and I guess how will I find out when and where that meeting takes place? They'll, They'll get, get noticed. noticed. They'll get noticed. Oh, we'll get a letter on yeah, that as well. Yeah, you got this time. It's the same distance. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I was reading the code, there are some, I mean, again, this is only for the, the building, so I guess whether or not you allow these variances, but it's, it appears that, you know, if they're only providing 1,900 and they require 5,000, they're, they're asking for more than half of what's required. That seems like a large variance request. Um, you know, of course, I'm here for whatever way we can keep this from moving forward, because for those of us who live with this in our backyards, it has the potential to affect our property value. Yeah. And, and that's a big concern for us. Unfortunately, it's it's for you guys. It's a commercial. It's allowed within the, the commercial no, district. And, and we're not disputing the fact that it is zoned, you know, mixed use commercial that we do agree with. But this particular business with 60,000 gallons of propane on the property? I don't think they can hold 60. It's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's about 80% max okay. in, the, in there. So it's about 48,000. Which still seems, it's, yeah. it's still a lot of propane yeah. to have in your backyard. And I'm not exactly to sure where your house is yeah. located. <laughs> we are right there. around the corner from there, but the property backs up to all of our backyards. So, you know, where Route 6, Baldwin Lane, right near Stop and Shop, so we're right there on that corner. So, okay, okay. so again, that, those are our concerns. I guess we'll present them at the planning board meeting, yeah. and, and we'll definitely get a letter with regard to yes. that. Yep. It's yeah. the, okay. same, the same distance the same, same. by the same people. Okay. Same setbacks. Um, just on the variance request, is this a reasonable, this is my first experience, so is it reasonable to it, request? It's not unreasonable when, when something's been existing for as long as this house has. Mm -hmm. like, it's, it's a unique scenario. Because it predates our, our, our zoning ordinances whatsoever. Okay. So it's uh, traditionally we kind of, you know, see, see things in a, in a better light. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Anybody else wish to be heard on this application? All right, do you want to come back up and speak, any of you guys? Yeah, just, just to respond. what you were going to say before. Just to respond to any of her comments, or, or if well, not, you don't have to. The first yeah. uh, thing, I, I know you've already addressed it, but there will be a planning board hearing where there's a public hearing on this, uh, and notice will be provided to all the neighbors at that planning board hearing to discuss any of the additional improvements on the site. Okay. And I believe, Adam, had one more comment to make. Yeah, I, I, I just want to clarify that again, this is a pre existing use. Um, I would certainly understand the commentary if, if we were presenting a, you know, a newly proposed building that was, you know, that was smaller than the minimum requirement. And with regard to the location of the tanks on, on the site, uh, the, this is a 12 acre site, um, and the entirety of the development is within about an acre and some change uh, up against uh, Route 6. So, you know, we're not, the, the, this site, as you could tell from the existing conditions plan, is fairly extensive. The extent of the, the development is in this area here. Mm -hmm. Where so is more, the, just want to point where's the closest you house? That, that, that picture there. Um, what's the elevation uh, at the tanks? The elevation at the tanks? Yeah. We're, we're close. We're a, we're a few, maybe a few feet above the, the, the road grade in that location. We're, we're in around here. Yeah, that lot goes up. Yeah, it goes yeah, it, it, uphill the, the, in the, the back. The slopes get quite steep. And is that going back down? The site. Is that going down or is it going up? This there? goes up like this. It goes oh, up from the road. Uh, 
So that's a higher elevation, those higher land here, lots in the back. Here. Yes. And in the direction that we've moved the tanks from the original proposal, we're really moving them closer you know, to this wooded area over here, not to any, toward any particular uh, adjacent property. How close is the closest house? Uh, I don't know a dimension off the top of my head, but you know, you can see our, our tanks are in around this area here, so we're pretty much pretty central on our 12-acre lot. Okay. And there's and no other property that you could purchase, right, to, to bring it in to conformance? No. You're landlocked there, right? Well, as far as the variants go, it's, we're right on the road yeah. there. That's the problem. Yeah. Yep. Yep. One quick question for Mike. This minimum square footage, that's on the lot or the building? Building. Okay. For the commercial zone. It's because it flipped from a resident, well, because it's a residential building or a building in a commercial zone, that's what it's all about. Any site plan or approval for a building in the commercial zone? Correct. That has to be 5,000 square feet. Correct. Or more. Okay. You guys all good? Yeah. Any other questions? You good? All right. I'll look for a motion to close the hearing. On motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Our next case is case number three. Uh, application of Ann Margolis for a variation of section 156-15 seeking a variance for permission to construct a new deck. The property is located at 9 Avril Drive, Mohopak, New York, tax map 64.12-2-19. The code requires or allows a 15-foot side setback. What's provided is a 13.5 um, location and the variance required of 1.5. And then for the rear setback, 20 foot's required. The code allows that. Uh, what will be provided is two feet. So a variance um, is being requested of 18 feet. So good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, just it, you, that you mic comes mic off if you want to you want hand hold it. Much better. All right. Ann Margolis, 9 Avril Drive, Mayapack, New York, 10541. Now switch hands and raise your right hand. <laughs> swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay, thanks. All right, bring us through your, your case. Your um, the deck is old and starting to lean. Stairs are starting to fall apart. There's some things that are not to code. We need I'm to. Sorry, just just speak up. Oh, it's sorry. Being for a the deck is is very old. It's starting to lean. The stairs are starting to lean and separate. So we want to fix it and um, figured that you know we. It's time. What's that? It's time. It's it's time. It's more than 20, 30 years old now. Okay. So I inherited the house from my mother, and uh, we're slowly starting to, you know, figure things out. Um, so we figured we would add on a few feet. Um, that's uh, that's why we need the variances. Um, All right. So you, you're going into the existing areas, or you, you're expanding the deck? We're okay. expanding it just slightly on the left side where. Um, kind of butts up to the property, which is why we need that one and a half foot. Um, and it, because we're on the lake, that's why we need the yeah, variance. The, the deck that already the exists is already, ha has the, um, the variances, but this is gonna be just a few feet longer right, or wider. You talk to your neighbors on that side? I don't have neighbors on either side. Oh, really? Um, there are actually associations on both sides so, so, that have multiple. Okay. But I mean like the nearest house. Any of those, those folks, it would affect them most, but. Um, if they're here, if they had a problem, I'm sure they'd be So here. the way my house is set up, um, so yes, we spoke to them. It, they, they can't even see the deck because there's a bunch of trees that line because there's a right-of-way that separates our property from then the next house. Okay. Um, and the way my house is set up is it's it's so far to the, to the left of the property, so it doesn't sit in the center. So this deck is, it, it doesn't really affect anybody except okay. for us. And there's no property you can buy to bring in conformance? No. Okay. Uh, questions from the board. Yeah, just on the top level, are you redoing that deck too? On the second floor? We are going to replace the boards that are disintegrating and keeping it exactly the same. Okay, so that's the same. And changing the railings. So you're moving the bottom deck over? Just this, yeah. Nice exactly. Losing my garden, but adding some more deck. But you're losing your garden, you said? I am. Yeah. <laughs> no questions. No further questions. All right, Rose. I had a question for Mike. The 20 rear. Is that because they already had a variance for, they already had a variance, now they, when you advertise, 
do you advertise for the amount, the entire amount, or the additional amount from the variance before? If just for the additional so two the feet, because yeah. they already had. I believe that this is the entire, because we don't have that much property between the house and the water, and we're only extending the deck like three and a half feet wider than what it is. That's so that 18 area. feet, it, we don't. It's not. We're not adding on an additional 18 feet. Okay. Right. Yeah. Under advertised, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I, I would defer to Mike, but I believe that that's the case. You're fine. You're fine. Phil. No questions. Thank you. Sylvia. No questions. Julie. No questions. Any input or questions from the public on this application? Nope. I'll look for a motion to close. So here. moved. Do I have a second. Second. All those all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right, application number four, um, Silver Spoon Foodies, LLC, for a variation of section 156-39.3, seeking permission for a temporary trailer permit for one year, 45 foot by 10 trailer. Property is located at 870 Route 6, Mohopak, New York, tax map 65.13-1-54. So the code requires or allows a temporary trailer allowed for only emergency. What's being provided is a construction or construction on property in future, and the variance required is to allow a temporary trailer on lot without approvals. Good evening, you're the applicant. Christopher Serace, 21 Columbus Drive, Carmel, New York, 10512. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay, what's, what's the situation? So you're building? Yeah, so um, I own the lot, 870 Route 6, right next to Arturo, it's across the street from Carachas. <coughs> I bought it about a year ago. And I've been trying to figure out what to do with it. I had an, a general idea of what I wanted to do with it. And I'm currently working with architects and civil engineers now to put my plan together to open up a future restaurant in that location. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I own three restaurants in Westchester County. And I'm, I obviously live up here. And I've been looking at that property for a long time. So okay. I'm happy to take it over. Um, but what's the need for a trailer at, uh, the, at this juncture? Uh, I want to. Well, Part of it is I just had a child in December, so I need do do need some place to work. But I want to have a place where I can sit where I can sit there and meet people on site and figure out all the things that I want want to happen on the property. I'm still kind of working on the design and layout of everything on the property. The trailer itself was a surprise to me. Um, it was gifted to me by somebody that had it on a lot, and they told me on a Thursday. I looked at it on Friday, and. I just had to take it. I planned on coming here Monday. Mike was there five minutes after it got dropped off. I was, like, I was gonna come in on Monday and see what the, what the deal was. Essentially, I'd like to have just an office space for me for, you know, for the upcoming year, you know, uh, to basically plan, have a place to work and, and plan it out. Uh, All right, I've teacher. been on this board for over 20 years. This this is a new one on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, I'm not I'm not here begging to keep it there. I would like to keep it there. I'd like to have a place to work from. Um, it's a trailer. I can move it. It's you know it's not something that you know I'm going to sit here and beg and plead for. And where do you plan on putting this towards the back? Uh, I have it. Uh, it's already there. I have it kind of. Oh, it's there. <laughs> Yeah. I put it in the most invasive position. I feel like you'd be able to see it off of Route 6. And I put lattice around the bottom of it so nobody could go underneath it and made it just look like a standalone building as simple and quickly as I could. This, this trail is um, it's towable. Yeah. You can tow it. Absolutely. You can, um, I mean, you can move that. I can move it in any position on the lot or off the well, lot. Well, we don't need any. This, I mean, the variance is just uh, to allow it's it. to allow it. Just to allow it. Allow it. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Just to allow it. I did go around to all the local neighbors and all the restaurant owners and business owners in the area. I had them sign off on this. I do already know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah we can. Yeah. All right, so it says, by signing this form, we have approached, but... We have been approached by a property owner of the vacant lot located at 870 Route 6, Mohopak, New York. Uh, we understand that he had parked the trailer on his lot and will be seeking approvals for a one-year permit. We were informed that there will be a planning board ZBA meeting today. If we do not attend this meeting, please use our signature, signature as acceptance. 
And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. No, no, it's, it's, you're just double counting because they printed the name and then they signed it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. One, two, no. three. No. I think that's four or five. Oh, one. One. Oh, there's a line there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. There's a I went, I went to, half a dozen or so signatures. Arturo's is the closest building to me. And um, I see Arturo's owner yeah. there, Carmelo's on yeah, there. So I so that that's and then the the Tony's there, which is 888. Yeah, all the, all the people there. So an Italian restaurant? No. no okay, no. thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that would be awkward <laughs> next to Arturo's. I'm, I'm actually very friendly with all the restaurant owners up here. I have, a, I have a, another business with beverage dispensing. So I have a company that installs and services draft beer lines, and we do beverages and cocktails on tap. So nice. I pretty much installed every draft system in up in May. All right, so, so drinks are on you. <laughs> right, um, any questions down here? No questions. You guys no questions? Yes, I have questions, Got of course. Yeah. Um, what happens later? Where are you going to plant this when the year is up? I'm just, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to give it to the next person who needs it. I don't, okay. you know, as soon as, as soon as I saw Mike that day, the next day I had it up on Facebook Marketplace to make sure I had people that would want to buy it. And I had a couple people that were looking to take it off my hands immediately. So if I had to move it, I don't think it'd be an issue to move it. But again, it is towable. I just need a tow truck company. To I guess it. the important question is, is there any plumbing and running water or? No running water. To Wait. it, um, the inside of it has just lights and just a heater, like one of those split Mitsubishi units. Mm -hmm. yep. But that's, right. that's pretty much it. No, no running water. What is the siding made out of? Is it wood? It's, is it paintable? It's, it's paintable. Oh, well, it was already painted. You should have seen it when it first rolled. Oh, that was painted. <laughs> um, Could be a little. Will you be selling any food out of there? I, I don't plan on doing anything out of there except. Working there, I mean, I, I'm Paperwork. Do cleaning the lot. I want to have a place to, you know, go up there, work, place to go, clean the lot, um, and just have meetings up there. When I actually start to do construction, it's I'm going to have to move off. I'm going to end up moving it off the lot. But the way I positioned it is the way that I'm currently working with my architect to view the piece of property for the layout I want to do. So it's helpful for me to actually sit there and look out the windows and see. Imagine what I want to do. It would, it would become a site trailer for the construction. You know, uh, in your mind, what would be the construction start date and when we would have something established? Well, ideally, I'm trying to pay off the property this year and at the same time try to get my approvals this year. So after this year, hopefully I could get that phased on and probably the following season. I would, two of my restaurants are heavily seasonal, so in the off season, probably the following winter, I would like to start doing construction. So it could be two years then that you'll need it. I'm hoping that I could get all that stuff done in a year and then it's, I, it could be off the property. Once I get all my approvals for my plans and everything, I don't really want it there. I mean, really I want it there so I could visually sit there and see what I want to do. And I have a good idea what I want to do, but I'm still kind of. You'd have to come back to, if it it's extends past a year, if we approve this, you'd have to come back for further approval. So it would be a, it would be a one year. Yes. We can condition it, right? No, that's Condition. what he's asking for is one year. Okay. Oh, he's, no. excuse me. Okay, no further questions. This color is pretty striking. And he, has anybody else been out there? Striking the I thought it was a good color. <laughs> I drove by it. You know, I, 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 can, can it be painted? Yes, I could paint the whole trailer every day. It needs yeah. to be painted. I don't wow. necessarily. I think it looks nice. Mm. All right. Uh, everybody good? No yeah, further we're questions? Good. Any nope. input from the public or questions on this application? No, my objection to Rosa's comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. like what about the color? color? I like it. I, I like, the like color it. Too. Yeah. So you okay. know, it's actually the color right. of my house. House. <laughs> oh, it just, wow. You oh. just see this empty lot and you see this blue. It blends in with the sky. It's fine. All right. All right. I <laughs> uh, look for a motion to close the public hearing on motion this application. Motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. All right, application number five, Sheldon and Laura Ginsburg for a variation of section 156-15, seeking permission to construct new stairs on front porch with which requires a setback variance. The property is located 795 South Lake Boulevard, Mopac, New York. Tax map 75.43-1-16. The code requires or allows a 40-foot front yard setback. What's being provided 
is 6.5 feet will, will be provided. Entire front of house and porch are non-conforming. Existing stairs projected to setback. New stairs will closely align with the exist, existing stair being removed. So the variance being re required is a setback variance of 33.5 feet. Good evening. Good evening. Do, do, does that about sum it up? <laughs> it does. Okay. <laughs> He's speaking Can we go home? No. <laughs> Just state your name and address for the record. All right. <clears throat> My name is David Coffin, 110 Wood Road in Bedford Hills. Just raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so we'll help you God. I do. All right. Bring, it, bring us through this uh, case. Okay. Um, first, let me just say that the the house is uh, and the location um, in terms of the setback is non-conforming to begin with. And the house was built in uh, 1850, so um, you know there is nothing that we can do about you know being within the setbacks. Um, at any rate, a lot of, right now there's a building permit for uh, interior renovations. And as a result of that, we've relocated uh, the front door from the center of the room in the center of the house over to the side where the new stair is going to be located. And um, the reason for that is to improve, number one, circulation uh, inside the house and also functionality. So at any rate, the, the intent um, as you can see on the drawing, is to locate the stair right in the corner where the new entrance door is. Right. The original entrance door was over here in the middle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the house. All right, so <clears throat> if you take a line parallel um, with the property line, mm -hmm. um, this is the property line right here. Right. And then the original stair line uh, runs essentially right along here. So that the corner of the stair, what we're talking about, is having this stair wrap around. And then the corner just project, uh, projects just a little bit mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. beyond the existing stair. All right. So. Um, <clears throat> But to be on the safe side, that's one of the reasons why we're asking for the 6.5. All right, so there's no other property you can purchase to bring it in? Absolutely not. It's no, in fact, if you take a look at the photographs that we have on the front page, mm -hmm. yep. you'll see that there's really Large no place fence. to go. And everything's behind an existing brick wall. Okay, so they talked to the neighbors next door. We sent, uh, we did. We sent all of the... Uh, notifications out yep. to the adjacent. Okay. Yep. All right. Any questions from the board, John? Uh, the um, blue stone or the uh, slate that's down there—that's that's staying or that's removed? It is. It is staying. That's really nice. Pardon me. It looks really nice. Yes. Yeah. No and you know, in order to connect with the new stairs, yeah. that will—we're going to have stone that will connect with the bottom, the bottom rock. Tread. Yeah, it's tight right there. Yeah, Route six. it is. It is. It's tight, but tight, I think it's tight going tight. to improve. It's it's certainly going to improve uh, what happens anyway with the porch and the new entrance. All right, Rose. Any Nothing. questions? No yeah. questions. Thank you. All right. Thank Still you. Real. No questions. Thank Still you. Real. <laughs> Any input from the public on this application? <laughs> I'll look for a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Finally, last case this evening. Application of Stephen Spada for variation of Section 156-15 seeking an area variance for permission, permission to build a detached accessory structure to be used as a storage workshop. The property is located at 6 Kayla Lane, Mahopak, New York, and tax map 64.6-1-44. The code requires or allows 40-foot front on Hill Street. What's going to be provided is 18 feet, so a variance required of 22 feet. Good evening. Good evening. 
State your name and address for the record. Stephen Spada, 6 Kayla Lane, Mayapack, New York. And raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. So I hope you got it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, bring us through your application. So I'm just simply looking to build a storage sh shed um, on my property. Um, essentially, we just have a lot of uh, storage items like a lawnmower, just household items, a workbench, and then various garden tools. I look in a store right now. I get in trouble every day with my wife when she says, why can't I park my car in the garage? And I say, well, it's because we have all this storage. Um, these items that need to be stored in my, in my um, lawnmower is taking up where a car would go. So we were hoping to just build a storage shed on the property where all those items can go. I have it separated where one side of the storage shed will be items that are kind of dirty, where grass will be like the lawnmower will go on that side, where I won't mind it to get dirty and all that. The other side is for more household items, things that I wouldn't want to get dirty, so that's the reason for it being divided. Um, so you're going to have a wall in between? That's correct, yeah. And two doors? It, it'll, be, it'll be a wall with two doors. One will just okay. be a walk-in door, and the other door will be enough for the ride-on lawnmower to uh, make its way in. And uh, the reason for the location, it actually is in the area that would be of least impact to any of my neighbors. I have one neighbor that's really to the left of me. I have obviously sent the letter, but I also texted him and let him know that what we're intending to do. He said, okay. whatever you got to do, no go issues. ahead. Right. Um, the, ro the reason for the variance is because it's right next to Hill Street. Right. Um, Hill Street, between my house and Hill Street, it's an elevated area where there's a fence, trees, rocks. Um, frankly, you won't even see the shed once it's built from Hill Street, um, but I understand the purpose of the variance. Um, and so uh, where it's located, though, will actually be the least intrusive to any of my neighbors and uh, functionally makes most sense for where it is in the yard as opposed to being in the middle of the yard, it's a little bit to the side. Okay, and there's no property you can purchase to bring it into conformance. Mm -hmm. Your landlock there. No, there would not be. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's written. As, it's not advertised yeah. as, as such. Um, so, Julie, any questions? Uh, no questions. Silvio. No questions. No Rose. questions. Thank Rose. you. John. Rose. Where's your septic? My septic is located in the front yard. I know this because we had a septic issue and it was all repaired. It's located in the front yard of the property. Um, the septic is immediately in front of the front uh, door, um, and then it channels out. The fields are in the front left section of the property, so it's actually nowhere near the backyard where this is going to be placed. Okay. Um, you have a fence there, and I'm not sure if the fence is legal. You have a six-foot fence on Hill Street, close to Hill Street. Uh, how... That would be a front yard variance, wouldn't it? If, it, if it's on Hill Street? Where's I went through Campanella Fence, so I'm hoping it's legal. But um, mm -hmm. I did go through Campanella Fence. Um, it, it seems, well, it's actually closer than this 18 feet. Mm -hmm. I don't what's the set? Isn't it 40 feet on the front for a fence? A uh, front yard fence could only be four feet tall. Can only be four feet tall. This but is six. It can six be right feet. on the line. Yeah. It can be on the line. Oh, it can be on the line. Absolutely, can be on the line. All right. So it should only be a four-foot fence, and you have a six-foot fence there. So you need a variance for that. I'll take a look, and we'll, okay. we'll let you know. Take a look. I did. Uh, I went through Campanella Fence, and I asked him, and he, not to. We'll take a look. Said, he said that it would be good. But I'll, uh, you know, sure. certainly we'll look into that, and if I need to appear, I will appear. Okay. Um, why so close? Can you pull it in more? Oh, I'm sorry, the fence or the shed? The shed. The shed, um, it wouldn't, I mean, I'm just trying, so there's a, there's a <coughs> playground area for my kids that is located right to the left, right in front of that. It's actually why I have on the thing you see windows just because if I'm in there, I want to be able to see my kids. So it can't go any further because there's a playground right there. Okay. No other questions. All right, John, are you, are you providing heat in there, Steve? No, no intention of providing. Is it going to have electric? Plumbing? No. That's what it's going to look like? Cable? That's the back side <laughs> of it. It's one window. I, it's that's the front side. Cool. If you look at the front, you'll see the... the it's pre-manufactured? I haven't... No, I haven't made the decision if it's going to be oh. pre-manufactured or just built right on the spot. That's I'm just waiting. a rendition then. That that's I'm correct. At. That's correct. Are you going to build that or are you going to get that Me. Just curious. You just said that. Yeah, yeah that's I what... Was, was, so I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to look for like the pricing options and obviously try to go with the most... Who's the architect? 
the architect is just a, a, a family friend, to be honest okay. with you. That's, and so what, if, if my variance gets approved, I was then going to find a local, I guess, design and have it be more formally designed and then make sure it's structurally sound and all of that kind nice. of stuff. Nice. So we can have it conditioned that there'll be no plumbing in it? That's right. Okay, sure. sure. No further right. questions. Any, any input from the public on this application? I didn't think so. I'll look for a motion to close the Motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you That's very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. At this point, there's no input from the public on any application as we adjudicate. Um, number one, we took care of already. Yeah. Uh, application number two, platinum propane. I look for a motion. Motion with, to grant with the condition that there'll be evergreen trees, bushes, um, screening. Screening. Do I have a second? I second that. Any discussions further? Mm -hmm. yeah. Screening in the front. The front. We want them, we want them uh, yeah. on the front. Along Put the them road, along three the feet on center, Phil, sure. from each one, yeah. So it's, an, it's a screen. And how tall? Six feet. I think they showed it on, on their site plan. Yeah, they, those, they, they had a, those were deciduous. Yeah. They yeah. were not evergreen. Yeah. This was different. That was the problem. That was okay. the problem. Um, All right, I'll do roll call. John, for the motion. For the motion. Rose. For the motion. Phil. For the motion. Phil. For the motion. Julie. For. And I'm for the motion. So it's granted. Application number three. Dan Margolis, look for a motion. Sorry, motion to grant. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's granted. Uh, application number four, Silver Spoon Foodies. I'll look for a motion. Uh, motion to grant for one year, it says it there. All right, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on this one? Has anybody been out there? Did you see? Did you see the building? I no? saw it. Yeah, Just I driving by. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I don't look at the applicant basically said it's it's something that's uh, a luxury for him. I don't think it's it really meets variance requirement. Um, if you look at well, for instance, we we've approved uh, trailers for the D. DEP, Mike, is that by the reservoir? That's the DEP or DEC? Yeah, the DEP. one with the, yeah. Yeah. I mean, with the 10 years. Of, we've approved them right. like the yeah. last 10 years in a row, right? I just yeah. think that's a different. That's a, yeah, that's, that's a utility. That's a, need. That's a different. Yeah, it's, it seems yeah. like you're this right. Is it's just a, it's it's a luxury. True. It's a luxury item. So I am not, I'm not for the motion. Okay. Ross, hmm. any comments? I would agree. He doesn't really need it. Um, yeah, I think he even said that himself. Yeah. And I think if we open the store, we could be putting ourselves in a position where many people want to do this kind of thing. So I think since he doesn't really need it and he's open to moving it, not selling it already, it, giving it away, give, getting rid of it, then I think I think I'm against the motion. Then. Okay. So uh, you, yeah, I, 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 I hear what they're saying. Yeah. Okay. And Julie. What are your thoughts? I think you're, I, I, yeah, I'm worried. If, I know every case stands on its own. Sorry, Julie. Um, but yeah, I'm worried about what this message this sends. So, okay. I wish him luck. <laughs> All right. It was a motion for approval, but uh, we're now uh, yeah, talking I, against I, it. I stand with mine. Yeah. So we, we vote on the motion to approve. So vote okay. on the motion to approve. So we'll do a roll call, John. Yeah, for the I vote. For, I'm for the motion to approve the trailer for one year. Rose against the motion. Bill against the motion. Sylvia against the motion. Julie for. And I'm against the motion. motion so fails. It, it fails. Well, it gets denied. Right. All right. Application number five for uh, Ginsburg. I look for a motion. Motion to grant. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then application number six, Spada, look for a motion. Motion to grant. Second. Second. The, Any discussion? I, I wanted um, no plumbing in the, um, as a condition of that. Do you make that condition, Phil? Surely. I'll second that. You second that? Yep. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's granted. Uh, let's see. 
think we have them. Yeah, I don't think they're right. She didn't have them ready, so. Uh, I'll look for a motion to close the meeting. Motion to close. Second, Second. by Julie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, good night. We'll see you Aye. all next month. So. March 23rd, I think, is the next meeting. Everybody's good. Is this right?